this is Ashley Victoria Robinson from The Pop First here live at San Diego Comic-Con with the amazing, the beautiful, the talented Erica Schultz. Hi. You are saying too many, too many, too many nice superlatives. I am just trying to be really calm and cool and collected about someone I think is absolutely amazing. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Thank you. So I have to ask because Deadliest Bouquet started life as a Kickstarter book. It did. Um, so originally we had had a, a publisher attached, but then COVID happened and everything got scuttled. And so I'm kind of the, okay, you're not going to do it anymore. I'll just do it myself. So we put it out as a uh, trade, not a trade, excuse me, as a graphic novel, but it was still paced for five single issues. And after we had a successful Kickstarter last summer, um, James Emmett, who was our editor, is phenomenal and, and such a great guy to really help out with the Kickstarter. And then on a lark, I just said, you know, why not just send it to Image and see if they would pick it up? And uh, Eric and Marla were really receptive to it. And um, yeah, I was really excited. Can you tell us a little bit about your influences as you were scripting Deadliest Bouquet? Because I see a lot of people comparing it to Knives Out. <laughs> yes, I would say that it's like Clueless meets Knives Out. So the influences is, is, it takes place in 1998. So I was a junior or senior in college. And um, it's basically a family drama and it delves a lot into the relationship between these three sisters. Mm -hmm. I'm the baby of three. So I know that when you're one of three, there's this round robin of alliances <laughs> that, that happens between siblings. And we really like delve into that. And it's not just that, but with the death of their mom, they're also dealing with grief specifically. And they each deal with things in, in, in their own personal way. Uh, but there's still tons of ass kicking and lots of fights and knife fights and fun stuff like that. Yeah, don't sell it short, there's a dead body very early on. <laughs> yeah, there's a dead body on literally like page three. There's, there's, there's a dead body, Jasmine, um, the uh, matriarch of these three sisters, of Violet, Rose, and Poppy. Um, yeah, Jasmine, uh, unfortunately, is what, uh, her death is what brings everybody together because these three sisters are pretty estranged from each other. For some of our witchier viewers or listeners, are the names of each of the characters telling about who they are? Um, no, I think it's more, I mean, they, their mom owns a flower shop, and so everybody sort of has a flowery name. So the three sisters are uh, Rose, Poppy, and Violet, and then Jasmine's their mom, and then Dahlia's their grandma. So everyone has a flower name that way. Um, but it has been compared to Charmed, which mm -hmm. I wrote for Dynamite a few years ago, and I just wanted to say, I was like, but there's no magic in this, I promise. <laughs> like, it's, it's, when I say it's Knives Out, it's Knives Out because it's like regular people. Uh, but yes, it, it has been compared to Charm because of the three sisters. Nice, and you took on the incredible job of lettering as well as scripting. I feel like you've done just about every job in comics at this point. Why did you want to take on lettering? Um, I actually tend to letter a lot of my own comics uh, because I'm very kind of uh, um, a control freak in that way. Um, organized, organized. Organized, yes. Uh, but yeah, I, I worked at a studio for about seven and a half years, mm -hmm. and when you were there, you had to do a little bit of everything. So I was lettering, I was a background artist, I was an inker, I did coloring, animation, everything. Um, so lettering my own book also gives me the opportunity to touch up dialogue. Mm -hmm. This way I don't have to do a lettering pass and send it off to somebody else. Um, I can just, as I'm lettering, I can say, oh, you know, I'm going to move this balloon to this, uh, to this panel, or I'm just going to, like, you know, fix this, add the next thing kind of thing. I also really want to compliment you on the icons that go along with everybody's internal monologues. It makes it so easy to, one, remember all the characters' names in issue one. And they're so beautiful. Did you design those? I did. I, I threw those together, and, uh, and I wanted to make sure that we had, uh, that everybody sort of had their own little branding. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kevin Maher, was, uh, who's an old friend of mine from college, was the uh, logo designer. And then what I did was I sort of designed everybody's little skull and, mm -hmm. you know, skull and handguns, you know, skull and knives and skull and, uh, you know, knuckle dusters um, as a way to sort of give everybody their own little brand. Um, and so I, those little designs and things like that, all those little pieces I put together. And where are your cute pins that we just showed everyone available? Oh, well, <laughs> well we have, um, I do have some of the enamel pins uh, here at the image booth, mm -hmm. um, but I, I didn't tell them about it, so I just sort of handed them literally like um, a Ziploc bag full of pins, <laughs> and I was just like, here's some stuff if you want it. So I don't know, they could be cannibalizing them themselves, or, uh, but I will have them up on my website, ericaschultzwrites, W-R-I-T-E-S.com, so I will be putting those up after the, uh, after the show. 
So much like your badass group of characters, you have a murderous row of talent on this book. You have like a whole group of designing women. How did you go about putting everybody together and collecting all of them? Uh, well, I've been wanting to work with Carilla Brelli for a while, um, and I had reached out to her probably a few years ago for another project, um, and the timing just didn't work, but it, it worked this time. And then Gab Contreras is uh, our fantastic colorist on issues one through three. Um, James Emmett and I, James the editor, he and I have worked together on a few projects, and uh, James is just really very good at finding the through line of a story. Because sometimes as creators, we have so much stuff and he just sort of weeds through it and is like, okay, this is where your path is. And that really helped. I do have to say though, uh, Gina from Super Socks Shop did this awesome jacket for me. Whoa, that's badass. <laughs> I, I have to give Gina a shout out for that. So I feel like you've dropped a ton of great nuggets, but we have a lot of people watching who want to create comics. What is your best piece of advice? Um, you hire an editor is my best piece of advice because like I said as a creator sometimes you are so close to the material mm -hmm. that you don't even see plot holes because everything is everything is just shorthand to you so if you hire an editor an editor will have an objective eye will come in and say look I don't know what's happening here I don't know how you went from here to here you have to you have to build that connective tissue mm -hmm. um, and that really really helps a great deal because other other times you know, you know what's going on, but you're not telling your audience. So if it's not on the page, it doesn't exist. And then lastly, because in the pop verse, we like to celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics. What is something that you're geeking out about right now that you're not working on? Um, my husband and I just finished Strange New Worlds. And <laughs> the, the, the progressive height of Anson Mount's hair <laughs> has has been something that I, I I'm practically like measuring it it's it's ridiculous you're out here climbing Pikes Peak with the rest of us yes I'm climbing Pikes Peak with the rest of us no I mean I grew up in a very sci-fi household my mom used to do spot LOs for like old Star Trek fanzines in the 70s and 80s so it's like this is this is very much like my vein so when I was watching it I was like He's actually a really good Christopher Pike. Mm -hmm. I really and I and I really love Strange New Worlds. I, I think it's a great show, and I'm looking forward to season two. Justice for Hammers, all I have to say. Yeah. Before I let you go, Erica, where can we find you? Where can we find Deadliest Bouquet here on the internet, everywhere in this planet? Okay, so you can find me, Erica Schultz42, on Twitter or Erica Schultz Writes, W R I T E S, on Instagram. Uh, my website is ericaschultzwrites.com. And Deadliest Bouquet will be in stores from Image Comics. The first issue has three different covers from Liana Kangas, Natasha Altarici, and Adriana Mello. And uh, it will be Im in stores, Image Comics, and August 10th. Yay, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.